Hey guys, it's Emily. Welcome back to the Casual Puzzler to another video, which is going to make me sound kind of crazy. So you guys know I am in the middle of moving house and you may think that starting a 4,000 piece puzzle while moving is a crazy idea and it is. But when Pinchy reached out with this video concept, I was like, that would be really fun. And it's a way for me to do a larger piece count while also moving. So they're not sponsoring this video, they just gave me the puzzle. It's actually the puzzle that I talked about on my wish list in my goals of 2023 video, which is called 160 cats. So they did send this over and it's four thousand pieces. So I am going to be starting a four thousand piece puzzle in the middle of moving. I'm here for like four more days. So we are going to start this together. So this puzzle will be done in multiple videos. This one we are doing one section which is a thousand piece section and I'm going to show how I'm going to be transporting it when I move. So let's just get into the overhead footage of me showing you what's inside, what the pieces look like if you've never seen a Pintu puzzle. I don't do too much overhead footage of me doing the puzzle but I do want to show you how I'm able to pretty much start a 4,000 piece puzzle in the middle of moving. So we're just gonna get into this video. All right, so this is the box of the 160 cats puzzle. One thing I do like about it is that it's so compact for being a 4,000 piece puzzle. This is one of their 600 piece puzzle boxes and it's almost the same size. It's a little bit longer, but it is quite thick. So it is chunkier than the 600 piece, but Honestly, for 4,000 pieces, I feel like it's nice and compact, which is something I really enjoy because it's not taking up a huge space in my puzzle shelves, especially since this is a puzzle I am bring, bringing with us to temporary housing. I love, the, I love that I had the option to bring a larger piece count with it being so compact. So that is one thing I do appreciate. Now, let me just take off the cellophane just so you can see it a little bit better. But on the front, they do have a missing piece little blurb if you are missing a piece. Um, I personally would have loved this little sticker on the back of the box, but it is not permanent. It's something that I can easily remove with the cellophane. So here is the full image. As you can see, it's a gradient rainbow that's in like cubes. And I will say that the blues kind of scare me just because each individual square, there's not too much of a gradient between one and the other. Obviously when they're all together, you can see a lot clearer. Unless these rows down here, I feel like each square is a very distinct color. So I think the bottom will be definitely be easier for me than the top. Um, there's also a ton of fur, but that's okay. I think it's still a very doable puzzle. So this is something I haven't seen before, but the actual cover comes off and then it almost feels like a shoe box. Um, so this is all that's keeping this image on the box is that it is kind of just hooked on there, um, which is fine, you know, um, but if you, since I am moving it around, I'm nervous this part is going to get a little dented and damaged, so I might put the actual cover inside the box. Unlike the other boxes that I have, this one, again, is more like shoebox style, um, so it just opens from the side and then lifts up, which I don't mind. I kind of like that, um, especially since I could probably hook this here and I can actually see the full image. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing, um, but you can see the full image. So actually this works out kind of well for me. Uh, let's see what else is inside the box. We do have a poster so you can see the image a lot bigger and some of these cats are so cute. Let me just take a peek at them. I'm definitely gonna do one of these lower parts first and this little guy, you know, like, I don't know if you can see, but there's so many cute little cat images and I'm very <laughs> excited for this. Uh, now let's go to the pieces. We have four bags of a thousand pieces, which, to me, it makes it a lot easier because you're not with having this daunting task of doing like a 4,000 piece puzzle. I believe this is the one that's one of the bottom corners. So I'm going to take this one out and then put everything back just so I can show you the pieces. There's something about like the sound of plastic pieces that's so satisfying. Um, 
I have this is my third Pintu puzzle that I've done before and I really like these pieces because they are so bright they are completely matte and I have had zero false fits with the other two puzzles that I've done obviously this one's a lot bigger so we'll see if that holds true for this size of a puzzle so here are a variety of the pieces hopefully you can see the brightness and the saturation and the color I like that it's just traditional piece shapes. I like how bright they are. I like how crisp the the printing is. Um, so I really have been appreciating these pieces. Now they don't have the edges in these individual bags. They actually have the edges on its own because these are like the frameable. In, these are the frameable edges. So that is something to note. So when you can see that you have an edge, you can clearly tell because there's a distinct line between the color and then just pure white and so here is another one um, so it is very easy to know which ones are true edges which is cool um, something I did want to mention though especially if you have like gripping issues or you don't really like smaller pieces um, this is the size of a pinchu puzzle piece and I just took out a couple other options just so you can compare the sizes um, so this one here is a Ravensburger piece and then this one here is an enjoy piece so significantly smaller um, but for me, it's still manageable to hold and you can see like the full image fine, um, but I just wanted to mention that because they are quite small in piece size. But what I am noticing is that the 4,000 piece puzzle piece size is the same size as a 500 piece one. Um, so it seems to be pretty much the standard piece size across the board. Um, so now that I've shown you the pieces and what's inside the box, I'm going to do this puzzle part off camera um, and I'll show you what it looks like maybe in stages so you guys can see the progress over time but I'm not going to do like an overhead situation just because things are crazy over here with the move um, but I'm hoping to get this thousand piece done before we move so that way I can show you the full piece but then also I can show you how you can make it a little bit more manageable when maybe putting it aside for a little bit and you don't have enough space to maybe do a full 4,000 piece puzzle or if you just like me are transporting it in between stages um, there is a way for you to like take apart the pieces pretty easily or large sections and we're just going to explore that part of these puzzles together. I think it is going to be a great option especially since I'm going to have very limited space to be able to pick up a larger piece count while moving is going to be awesome. All right, so I'm about to do a little bit more of the puzzle, but I didn't give you a recap of last night and my progress. So I haven't touched it since yesterday. And I just wanted to show you what I was able to do with just a couple hours. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, let me show you how far I got. So here is my current progress. And what was funny when I was doing this, so obviously I'm going like by color with the gradients, but when I was looking at the full picture, in my head I was still trying to work off the full image. And so I was counting how many squares over and I was like, wow, I'm still missing like eight. And then I realized, well, I'm only doing a quarter of the puzzle. So I actually did only have eight in the row so I was a lot further along than I was originally thinking and that makes me super happy so it's uh, eight squares by five squares and so I'm actually pretty far along with the first section and you can see my progress and obviously I'm working with the blue pieces and I've just been like pulling out the colors as I go and I know there's going to be like a lot of fur but what I'm realizing is like you can see it here that the eyes and the mouse and the different cat features are most likely in like one to two pieces. So it's not like this big massive piece count per cat. And I think that will make it a lot more doable, especially since there's different shades of the cats. Like clearly there are gingers, there's some white ones, there's some grayish ones over here. So I, I'm thinking it's not going to be as hard, at least for these bottom two sections. The upper two might be a little different story just because there's a lot of green and blue squares and this one has a lot more variation in the different colors, but so far so good. And I'm gonna continue on this evening and see if I can at least get the squares done. I might have to do the cats tomorrow, but we'll see.
I just want to share my current progress. I feel like I'm almost done. I have most of these four rows, and then there's just this row up here that's just cats right now. Um, but oh my gosh, I have so many thoughts. And look at this little guy. I've been loving this. All right, so the thousand piece section is complete and I did add the border here. Um, again, they do come in a separate little bag. And what I've noticed with this section is that it's even, the border even fits on the border of its current size. So my assumption is that each thousand piece is like just like a copy as far as the grid goes, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I, was, I don't really mind that too much because I'm not like following a grid pattern when I'm doing a puzzle, but I think that's how it comes. Um, but if you are maybe short on space, you could put the border around the whole thing as a thousand piece section. And yeah, you'll see like the little nubs on some of it, but I don't know if you just want to show one section of it, there's that option. So next up I want to do is break this apart into probably quarters to fit back in its box. So put this back in here because we're moving in just four days. We're gonna try to do the rip method. That's what it says on their website. It's just pretty much tear it. And that's what I do with these guys here, just so you can see, to break up the pieces. It is pretty easy, you just pretty much tear like you're tearing paper and they come apart. So I'm gonna try to tear it into fours and we're just gonna see how it goes. So I need it to be, yeah, probably right here will be the seam. Maybe this cat area will be the seam and then in half. So I think quarters would be perfect for this. So I'm gonna break it right down here and it's just a matter of Ripping it like paper. So that was really easy. Um, now I'm gonna rip this in half as well. Something right down this line. All right. Well, it ripped, but I didn't quite get it in the line that I want. So I'm gonna try just to get these ones off. I mean, it's pretty easy to take apart and it doesn't seem to be like bending the plastic at all. So here's the first two. And now let's do this guy. Same deal. I think it's easier to hold one side down, but apparently you can just go, oh, this is easy. That was way easier. Okay, <laughs> just don't do the original method. Just literally just pull up and rip it. Um, now I'm just gonna get the last little row again. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's way easier. Okay, so let's put these pieces back in its place. And we have a thousand pieces all together. So look at that. That's awesome. I almost feel like if I have more time this week, I might do another thousand piece section just to um, continue on with it. But that's perfect. Now we can just put the pieces back in. And now I can bring it to temporary housing with us. This is awesome. I'll put the edges and we're ready to move. All right, I am back. And as you saw, everything is in this box, which is awesome. I'm actually just about to pack my one box of puzzles for our temporary location. And I love that I'm able to bring a giant puzzle with me. It's really, I like how small the box is. It's super sturdy and I can bring it with me and it's already started. You know, I can just put those four sections together and transport it. And even when I'm in temporary housing, I could do the whole 4,000 pieces and then pack it all up again for our permanent location so I can hang it. So I am so excited for this. I have another 2,000 piece puzzle and another puzzle from them as well that I purchased myself and I'm hoping to use them for backdrops in my videos. So I love that I can like start making a collection while even in temporary housing. And I really don't have to do much assembly once I get to my permanent location. So I'm excited about this. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't checked out Pintu, I'll leave their stuff down below in case you are curious and wanna try them out. They are available in a ton of different countries, which is really cool. 
And yeah, anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I wish us luck for our move and stay tuned for more videos to come. Thank you so much. Bye.